Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we'll press on School down below in the middle there. We've done lessons on display objects, so how to see things on the stage, which we call it the canvas. And these are things like circles, shapes, triangles, that kind of thing, as well as components buttons, sliders, dials. And we've seen how to configure those, how to make them look like what we want, do what we want, and to animate them. We brought in functions and events, which are definitely programming basics, JavaScript, and abstraction. That's uh, programming basics everywhere. Yes, that's right. Uh, and even in life, abstraction. And then loops and arrays how to put things into a list and loop through them for efficiencies and, well, loop through a number of different things. And then conditionals and debugging, conditionals being how we apply logic and flow to our applications or what we're building. Or, uh, it could even be art. The, app, the word application sometimes it, <laughs> it's a word that we're using for a feature that we're making or a project. We don't actually have a name for what we make. It's interactive media, maybe. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's games, it's puzzles, it's art, it's apps. Apps is sort of now the kind of catch-all. I suppose an app can be a game, but, you know, it didn't used to be, but now it could be art. Is art an app? Well, the types of apps we make help us make art, so I, I like that idea. All right, anyway, carry on. <laughs> uh, then we, we did a lesson on templates. Well, we've seen templates before, but building. So we just finished the building lesson where we uh, built a bunch of stuff together in four videos. So there's multiple videos for each of these. If this is your first time here, hey, why don't you go have a watch of those? And now we're on controls. So controls is our last lesson, and we'll do a few videos on this as well to show you the different types of controls. Accelerator, Swiper, Motion Controller, Grid Guide, Parallax, Scroller, Dynamo, Accessibility Pages, Hotspot Layouts. We won't show you them all. And these ones uh, were some of the early ones. We'll call it mid ones. We've added more controls since then as well. Along with the controls comes a bunch of constants like Animate, Action Event, a Ticker. Well, a ticker is a class that we use. Um, what's another one? Optimize. There's another constant. So those are also in the controls. As a matter of fact, why don't we go out to the docs and check out the controls. This looks like the docs at the time the screen capture was taken, but we're going to show you some more. And there's also in the Zim School, there's examples of each one. What we're going to wear, well, let's go to the docs now. Then. We'll open a new tab. What happened to my Zim? Uh, zoom and hit enter my bar is gone I'm lost without my bar <laughs> I'm lost without the bar mm. no all right and we're hitting the docs here are the zim docs we've got the frame which is our framework primarily the display objects so these are all the display objects the methods that can be applied to the display objects and then here we are in the controls so there are those constants. Style is also a constant. You can open these up and read about any of them as well. Then we have some more serious ones like pages, hotspots, guides, grids, well, tiles, layouts. These are things that will help us lay out a page, especially in mobile where we want to swipe from page to page and use layout for responsive design. We've got a couple managers that help us manage that stuff. And controllers, so here are the fun things. Controllers, swipe, swiper, motion controller, game pads, portal, <laughs> wow, and physics. And then effects, the effects are immediately visual. So we're going to work on this first one, parallax. There's also scrollers, dynamos, accelerators, emitters, that's cool, two particle emitters and pens, that's fun, sound wave animating to sound, like some of our earlier videos. We're going to see a bit of that in this video, but just right at the end. Surprise, surprise! And uh, VR. So we'll look at a few of these. I'm not sure how many we're going to get to in the lessons. <laughs> I'll just keep on going. Probably you know, do a four videos or so. That's what we've been doing for each one. All right. So parallax. Yes. What about parallax? Well, we'll go back to Zim and there's parallax under the examples. Uh, let's have a look at some of that. 
There's some basic ones in the Zim bits. So if we turn on the Zim bits here, this is an image that has parallax. So the front moves more than the middle, which moves more than the back. So here we were making a little bit of a holiday card. <laughs> nice, huh? And that's that one. Um, there's also some scroll parallax, if we can find it. Uh, this one, no, not that one. Gorgolon. Gorgolon is a window within, uh, within Zim. So as we scroll, the saucer flies by. Oh, and then in comes the city. The saucer carries on. Gorgolon. So we're going to now animate going backwards. Saucer. City. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. And finally, saucer. So that's all done with scroll, scroll parallax. Uh, scroll parallax is quite... Shall I show you another example of scroll parallax? Let's go. Now, that's different than a scroller. This thing has a scroller. We'll just quickly see a scroller. Uh, fairly quickly. So that scroller is in the background. It is also doing parallax. The back isn't scrolling as much. The middle scrolls faster and the foreground scrolls even faster. We can slow that down and speed it up. So that's possibly coming up. That's another effect that we can do. <laughs> hey, Fred. All right, so uh, let's go right on back to the, ex the Zim examples, yeah, which is here. And in the Zim examples, we can scroll on down into Code Pen. There's another cool effect you can do with Parallax, uh, Dancing Aliens example here. Yeah, check those guys out. So this is now freeform where it's following my mouse. So as I move my mouse, the eyes move a little bit faster than the body, just to give a little bit of a, a funny effect. And hey, dance there. <laughs> so uh, you can check that out. It's a bit more complicated because there's a bunch of different things that we're doing with Parallax. It features the manual version of Parallax as opposed to using an input like a mouse input or a... A scroll input. It's, it, it, it appears to be using a mouse input, but that's because we've used a motion controller for this one that is freeform. But the yes, to be able to say yes, we're actually wiggling back and forth or animating back and forth. Uh, the dance maybe is a wiggle. So this is a wiggle that's um, being used to control the parallax. <laughs> Isn't that neat? All right, so do we have to go backspace through this? No, I opened it in a new window. Okay, so however, we're going to scroll down to, you know, back in time to a more, oh, well, we'll show you the traditional ones after this one. Look at this. This is a big, huge scrolling page. It's probably the most advanced scrolling page that we did. And uh, so we get these effects and whoosh. So this is all a parallax scrolling page. As we uh, as we scroll down, it will then, or use the scroll wheel, it scrolls in to show us other things that are here. And so it's a big, a big parallax effect. And, and you can press these guys right here down below, and it will animate backwards through the, um, the parallax scenes to our original one. But check out this first parallax. If we go inside here again, it's using mouse parallax and scroll parallax to uh, be able to look down this tube of stuff. Neato mosquito, huh? <laughs> so that's quite an advanced parallax site. Uh, if we scroll down a bit more, we see the, the Zim holiday card, which was my eyeball comes out, and it says presents and in come these packages which we can click on and that's a bit of mouse parallax that's that's working those and then we can animate a bit with parallax and send off our social media and then in comes an animation so that spinning is spinning with um, a parallax and then there we go and you hit the top and the whole thing animates back through so you may have seen that type of parallax. This can be done in Zim as well. That's an example there. Uh, the basic one, the basic parallax example, which you can find in Zim School, is this one right here. 
it's similar along the same line. So as, as we scroll, things are happening. And there we are animating that little robot as we scroll. But this is what I would call the most traditional parallax, where the things in the front move more than the middle and move more than the back. And we're using the mouse X there and the mouse Y. The mouse Y is less. You can also scale things based on the mouse Y. So as I scroll down, we get the rest and again back up to the top. Animates through that. Okay, so uh, great. Let's go into some code now though and get going. So in the school, by the way, uh, this example right here, Parallax, takes you to that one. All right, we'll go get a template. Woo -woo. All right, back up we go to Zim into the code and copy a template. So we're copying the template on the code page of Zim. Let's drop this down as well. Oh, that dropped out. And pop on into Adam, or an editor, paste our template, and we will say lesson 08 here, where we're working with controls. Nice. We're bringing in CreateJS. Thank you, CreateJS. We're bringing in a new 10.6.1, which we'll actually find handy in this example, because we're going to bring in some images. Uh, we'll get rid of the chaining stuff for the original circle that's there and without chaining, and we'll leave it with put your code here. And like I said, we're going to bring in some images that we can work with. So we can do that uh, right here. We'll set up a couple variables for them, or constants, <laughs> these variable constants. Uh, assets is equal to, we'll bring in three of them, a foreground dot JPEG, a background. Uh, you know what, the foreground, let's bring in, it doesn't matter the order, but just uh, we'll probably work with the background first. Background.jpg. And in between the background and the foreground, <laughs> did you guess? Uh, Midground.jpg. And that sort of sets us up into the way that we'll be working. Like I said, the asset order doesn't matter though. There they are, three of them. They're inside of an assets folder, so we need a path. Const path past is equal to uh, assets slash. Okay, now this just puts these into constants. It doesn't do anything until we pass them into the frame. So here's the frame call, and we're saying, hey, frame, can you please load these for us? So that was the assets and the path, like so. If there's a lot of assets, you might want to put a little waiter there. So we put comma new waiter. It will pass in a little waiter, and, and that will show while you're loading the assets. Or you can use a more uh, a full progress bar as well. So a new progress bar. Set up your progress bar. That actually pays attention to how much is loaded and how much is left. So we scroll on down now. Let's see that asset. In the past, it would be something like frame.asset, and that still works. We put the name of our asset, such as background.jpg, like so, and we'll center that on the stage. Let's have a look. We'll open up in a browser. And there is our background that we're going to use. Now, there's this fellow, his name is Frank, I think. Is it Frank? Oh, gosh, I hope I got that right. Uh, I found him on Twitter. <laughs> he found me. We both found each other on Twitter. And he's been doing some amazing um, generative art. And so we're going to take some of his generative art from his many, many examples. Actually, it's a tool that you can build generative art. It might have made sense for, for us just to go in and make some ourselves and use that. But uh, we're just showing you an example here, and I hope he doesn't mind. Actually, I hope he likes it uh, if he sees it. I'll certainly mention it to him. And we're going to build with his works to create a parallax uh, abstract background space. <laughs> parallax space. All right, so there's the background in there. Now, as mentioned, this was required at one point, but in 10.6, Zim 10.6, as as Zim or any JavaScript framework or library advances, we usually 
name our names uh, right here. So scroll up. Hey, learn JavaScript, right? We take these numbers and we advance them. So it used to be 10.6.0, and now there's been a small change. There are various updates, small updates to Zim. Uh, that haven't added anything particularly new, but may have adjusted certain things or fixed things. If we add something new, then we increase this number. And if we change a lot, like a, the whole sort of scheme of things, or add a whole bunch, then we can change this number. So that happened when we added style to Zim. That went to Zim 8. Uh, when we added the, the dynamic parameters, that was Zim V or 5. As in fourth was adding these methods, so that was, uh, etc. So, all right, scrolling down, the one thing that we've, uh, one of the things anyway, not the one, <laughs> it's more than just one thing, but one thing we adjusted in 10.6 is the fact that we decided to create a global assets function that points to this frame.asset. So frame.asset is a method that is on the frame object or on, in the frame class, part of the frame class. And you can tell it's a method because of the round brackets. So that's doing something. It's loading. It's it's putting our bringing in our asset. It's accessing our our asset. However, um, we decided to make that a global function like so. So now you can just say asset dot background, and that simplifies it down. What we're doing is, in a sense, uh, we have to be at least as efficient as HTML, or we try anyway, where they had image source is equal to and then they would put uh, the background.jpg in there and tag. And they might end there. Well, HTML5, you don't need that. So that would be an image tag in HTML. We've now got asset, and we say the name of it. So it's comparable. OK. All right. So uh, we centered that. That's great. Now we may as well store this in a const, const background, so we can refer to it more easily later, is equal to this asset that has been centered. And we'll copy that one, two, three times, and we will make midground, midground, and I'm holding down the control key there in Atom. If I hold down the control key, I can multiple select, and we've got the foreground. Now, um, what we're going to do is use uh, alpha, maybe even a blend mode on top, so that these all look neat. Right now, they all are just going to sit right on top of one another. We won't necessarily see them. So there, it looks like, is access to one of them. And they're they're bigger than we can see, these, these images. Uh, let's try setting the alpha then. So we'll drop the alpha of this one down to a dot alp of 0.4. That allows us to see through it. And on this top one, we're going to try uh, a blend mode. So we'll set a blend mode. Bleh. <laughs> Bleh is a chainable blend mode. On In raw canvas, it's called composite operation. So uh, this composite <laughs> operation, which is a mouthful. And in Photoshop, it's called, and various other places, it's called a blend mode. Um, in the Adobe products and the rest of the world, too, they call it a blend mode. So we do have a blend mode property. So we could drop out and say foreground dot blend mode is equal to something. As a matter of fact, the blend mode we are going to use is soft dash light like that a string. And there's different blend modes and uh, add and that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, we're using soft light. So you could do that. But uh, we decided not too long ago, in a few zims back, to apply a, a chainable, a short chainable method like alp and, and blend mode and wrote. Um, so we now have a chainable blend mode where we don't have to come out and do all that stuff like that. We just uh, can apply the blend mode there. All right, let's see what this looks like. When we refresh here. Ooh, neat. Now, if we kick quickly get the idea, if we were to drag this, dot drag like that. So we're chaining in a drag and refreshing here. 
this is the effect that we're going to see. So uh, we're going to get to the edge. There's the edge of that. Do you like that? That's a nice effect, isn't it? And there's the top. So this foreground is just a little bit bigger. Well, it's also quite quite a bit longer. Uh, it's longer. It's also a bit higher than the stage. And the idea is we're going to make this one move the most and we'll make the one underneath move a little bit less and then we'll make the background, which is those striped things, uh, move even less. So that will give us the sense that we're in some sort of big environment moving. All right, so we won't drag that though. We're going to instead use the mouse parallax. And to do that, we create a parallax object, so a, a new parallax like that. You will find that everything in Zim is, is good to be consistent uh, pretty well. Everything in Zim is quite consistent. If we want a new object to use, we say new and we put the object name and that will get us the object. So it's no different here with controls as it is with making a new button or a new circle. So new parallax. If later we need to access it, we might store it in a constant, but right now we don't, so I haven't bothered storing in a constant. Later, if we need to, we can just add a constant in the front of it. Now, if we're going to store a series of layers, the first parameter is layers. So how many layers do we want? Uh, how would we do that? These are things that are all the same a layer and another layer and another layer. You see, they're all layers. They're not exactly the same, but they're all layers. So the construct, the data construct we would use for that would be an array. Now, what would be inside? The, the layers themselves, we need to say information about the layers, like what is the object that will make up the layer? Is it background, mid background, foreground? Is it a circle? What's making up the layer? We have to say what property we're going to change. Are we going to be use, changing the X property or the Y property or the scale? We want to say how much that property is going to change. So we have a bunch of different things that we want to use to describe this layer. The data construct we use for different things is the squiggly brackets, because then we can give each one a description. The ob oh, a big description. The OBJ will be the background, comma, the prop that we're going to change, short for property, is the X property. The amount we're going to change, prop change, is going to be, let's try, is this the background? So not much. We'll, we'll put right now 40. And we'll see what happens. How about 100? So we can kind of see it better. So this will change it in the X, 100. And um, then we could put uh, what input will change this. Now, by default, the input is the X position of the mouse, which is what we want. So we're not going to bother. We're going to see the Y as well. And we'll have to make a change there. So here we have made the parallax object. Now, if well, let's comment out just for now. We'll comment out the mid-ground and foreground so we won't bother adding them. We'll just keep the background there. And we should be able to see the background move with parallax now. There we go. So as I move my mouse back and forth, the background's moving. Nothing up and down, really, but left and right, we're getting a parallax effect already. And then the next thing, we move more. Now, we could run into a problem. Say we move it a thousand, this is going to happen. We refresh here, and as I go over here, it's off the stage, and I go over here, it's off the stage. So how can we make it stop doing that? Well, the answer, if you apply a little bit of mathematics, is we take the background dot width, and we subtract the stage width, like that. And that if, if we only move that much, let's have a check. I think it will stay on the stage. So I'm, I'm over here and it's not off the stage. I'm over here and it's not off the stage. Indeed, it looks far enough. So th there you go. Uh, that's a way to do that. Let's try changing the Y on it, comma, and we'll, we'll copy it. 
I sit on the line. You don't have to select it. In Atom, you don't have to select the whole thing. You just sit anywhere on the line. You don't even have to sit at the beginning of the line. And I copy Control C and Control V, and there it is. As a matter of fact, I think I can just, well, okay. <laughs> that one sort of copied in front. All right, OBJ background, yes, but the property this time will be the Y property. The change would be the background height. This is assuming you want to move the whole graphic and how you don't have to, but oh, we'll need that. Stage H. So we're just quite often if you're changing things for width versus height, it's very easy to do. Width becomes height, W becomes H, X becomes Y, <laughs> X becomes Y. Now, uh, there's a few more things in here, though, that we need to do, because that would change based on the mouse X, which uh, isn't quite right. Because here, as I go across, it's going down. As I go to the left, it's coming up. That's not So it does this sort of diagonal movement. That's not really what we want. We want to control the height based on the input of the, um, uh, I think put a comma there, yeah, the mouse Y, mouse Y, like that. The other thing about a mouse Y is it doesn't act from the center, it acts from the bottom. So that looks good if you've got something on the ground, right? If you're using parallax and you've got a cityscape and you're parallaxing a cityscape where you're on the ground. Here, we're kind of more abstract. We're in space. We might be on the ground. Who knows what we're going to be really. But if you want it, uh, X, I don't know if you noticed, X automatically splits evenly left and right. So if you go into the center, the parallax kind of works evenly going from left to light, right. That's called split. And split is default uh, true for X, but it's not true for Y. So we want to say split true. Don't worry too much about that. So let's see how this works. Now the Y will go equally up and down. So now I can move up and down. You see me moving up and down there? And I'm getting uh, the up and down effect as well as the left and right. And indeed, I can go up to the corner, down to this corner, up to this corner, over to here. And it's following my mouse properly. All right. Now, let's copy this. Did we put a comma at the end there? Yeah, we did. So we're going to copy this whole thing because we're going to do basically the same thing for the other guys. And we'll reload our editor. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Luckily, it never strays far from where we saved it. So we'll try this again. Seems like some latest Adam is uh, is tree is instead of crashing it kind of does well I, I suppose that is a crash it does that anyway now we've got background so I'm gonna select background background or the back and the back and change this to the mid grounds and then the back here and the back here and the back here and the back here and call them foregrounds. All right, that looks fine. If you've got something like this, probably you could construct this in a loop. We could abstract and see how we didn't change very much. If we only change a few things, we might have been able to make this in a loop. In this case, it's no big deal. There's only three sets of things. I'm not too concerned, but I do want to bring these back. All right, another uh, thing is in space, I think let's move a little bit slower. The parallax, this is the first parameter which is the layers. There's also more parameters in parallax. One of them is the damping. And so damping, I can't remember. I think the damping by default might be 0.1. Let's change it to 0.01. This will move it slower. So instead of going directly to where your mouse is, and by the way, if you put it to one, it's instant, so it's very, very jittery. As soon as you start moving, it just follows it right away. It's not very organic but a 0.01 will be slower. 
So let's put a point zero 0.01 there and check out our parallax now. So here we are in the center. Do you see how it took a while to get to the center? And it takes a while to get to the edges? Is that nice? Look at that. Ooh I'm in some sort of space. Now, we're in the fit mode. The fit mode fits it into the window like that. But there is another mode that may work for us. Let's try it. Uh, well, first of all, in the fit mode, you might set the outer color instead of dark. How about black? Because if we are in space, well, we might want the outer color to look like this. So I'm going to refresh, and I'll F11. And here we are. Let's get back to the middle then. We'll bring that over. So here's the middle area where we seem to have two, two circles, and we'll sort of head on over there, head on over here. Nice, huh? But we're not using the, the full screen here. Now there is a full mode in Zim, but we'd have to worry about that a little bit because we don't know how, how big somebody's resolution is. However, there's another mode that may be even more helpful, and that's called outside in this case. Outside. So we don't really care if parts of it is missing. Like there's, this is all big enough, and if we don't really care if any of it's missing, or if you're shooting fireworks, you don't care when the fireworks go off the stage, then outside is a, a neat thing because it will take this scale and it will scale your app so that it always fits outside of the window instead of inside the window. And then you get this. So we refresh here, and I'll F11, bring up the full screen. Nice, huh? So now we get the whole parallax effect going right across the screen. And we're fine. We're just touching the edges still. And we come back to the middle here. Hello. We go up. Oh, darn. Progress bar. We go down. All right. What do you guys think? That's pretty nice. And it's so nice to be doing Remember how we said learn JavaScript? We said learn JavaScript with creative coding. <laughs> Here's why. Here's what we're doing this for so that we know how to create these beautiful things. And I promised you an outro, didn't I? So how about this? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> that was Dr. Abstract <laughs> in amongst a light show that he created just doing a little test run on it. So that was animating with sound, which is one of the controls. Perhaps we'll see it, perhaps not. It may be tricky to do here uh, live. Uh, I am Dr. Abstract. Come on back for the next lesson and learn JavaScript with creative coding. And join us at zimjs.com and zimjs.com slash slack where you're welcome to talk to us about any of this stuff. We'd love to see you there. Bye.